My current role is a science policy analyst at Ripple Effect, and Ripple Effect is an organization that supports mostly federal organizations like the National Institutes of Health on policy implementation and supporting any programs that they have at the agency. Um, specifically, I work with divisions and support, help maintain um, policies that are already um, in progress there or any new policies that come down from Congress or leadership at NIH. My job search contained a lot of visits to the professional development office while I was at Johns Hopkins. I attended a lot of the seminars that the office had where we were able to talk to people in different types of careers. And one day I attended a session where someone from Ripple Effect attended and I was able to talk to that person one-on-one -on -one and then apply for an internship program at the company. Once I applied for the internship program, I had my interview and accepted the offer. And for me, fortunately, that internship program turned into a full-time position at the company where I've been at since. I believe that what I learned in school did prepare me for the job as far as learning how to be very self-sufficient in the lab. There are a lot of skills that we get in the lab that are very applicable to other types of careers. For example, project management is very essential in my job. Um, being able to have very good time management to get things done in an efficient manner. These are all skills that I learned by managing my own projects in the lab that helped me translate to this career and be able to manage my projects there in the same effective way. Um, I also uh, took advantage of all the training opportunities that Johns Hopkins had to offer to learn about non-academic careers for PhDs. And by attending those seminars, I knew how to tailor my resume to apply for these types of positions that were outside of the bench. Going to everything is essential. Even when I would see a seminar at the professional development office that I knew I wasn't interested in, I still would go just to see what their day-to-day -day is like. I think as scientists, we're very interested in each detail of each day for each type of job. And so the best way to figure that out is to actually go talk to someone in the job. Using LinkedIn is also a great resource. I was not shy about cold contacting anyone. Um, if I saw that they had a similar training pathway as I did and were now in a certain type of career that I thought I might be interested in, I would ask them, well, how did you get there? What did you do to get to that point? And using LinkedIn was just a great time to meet people for informational interviews, which are also essential. And at the same time, this will help you build your network. These people will not forget you once you reach out to them. And so just by letting them know, hey, you know, I'm a student, I'm about to wrap up school, or I'm about to wrap up my postdoc, them having your name, they might shoot you an email and say, I know a job that's open. And that is an essential um, tool to have when you're on your job search. I would definitely say that students who want to enter this field should pursue opportunities like student groups and courses out, that are outside of the bench. Um, for example, there's Johns Hopkins Science Policy Group, and they do a lot of work to educate people about science policy. In addition to that, there's organizations like Project Bridge that do a lot of outreach in the Baltimore community, and their focus is science communication. Both things are going to be very essential to being more comfortable with entering the science policy field. In addition, Johns Hopkins offers a lot of courses, specifically at the Bloomberg School of Public Health that are related to policy. And so if you're interested, you can always take some time to audit a course there just to figure out what policy is all about so you have an idea of what you're entering into. If students are interested in entering science policy, they also can apply to a lot of science policy fellowships. I was fortunate enough to participate in the Christine Mirzayan Policy Fellowship at the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. In this opportunity, we're there for 12 weeks, and most of it is dedicated to just learning about what science policy is. You have time to visit the Hill, you have time to talk to people who do different things on science policy, and learn what the, academy, what the academies does on their own. 
In addition, there are opportunities at science member organizations like ACS, ASCB, and ASBMB, and they all have opportunities for people interested in science policy. So definitely look into the member organization that you're a part of to see if they have any opportunities to expose you to policy.